Thanks for joining us on the John Mandola Show. We're driven by McCarthy Tire Service. Well, let's talk some harness racing. And uh, John Campbell, uh, regarded as uh, the best harness racing driver ever, uh, has now retired and uh, will move into a different role. And, uh, John, uh, your final drives uh, came up uh, in the past week, although there's still uh, still a couple more to go, I guess, uh, at the end of the month, kind of uh, contractually they able to do that up in Canada and uh, a track that's near and dear to you. But uh, let's talk about the, the, the whole process here. Of, uh, uh, it came to a, a point where you said, hey, this is it, and I'm going to move into a, a different part of my life now. Yeah, it was an opportunity that came along uh, to, to go to work to, for the Hamiltonian Society. And uh, it, it's, uh, the timing, I, we, my wife and I, my daughters just felt was right for me. Uh, I think I pushed the limit as far as age for the driving far enough. And when this opportunity came up, uh, it was just too good to pass up. And it's something that uh, I've been on the uh, Hamiltonian board for, I think, about 25 years. So... It's uh, something that's near and dear to my heart, and I'm still going to be involved in racing, which which is very important to me as well. And uh, like any athlete, I guess you could say, you're, you're walking away uh, a healthy man. A lot of broken bones uh, in between there. As you say, uh, you're going out on your own terms. This is, a, this is a good thing, right? Yeah, it is a good thing. Yeah, I've been banged up before, but I actually feel very good physically. I don't have aches and pains, so I'm, I'm getting out you know, before I have permanent damage or anything like that. And um, it, it's the timing uh, couldn't have been better in this last weekend, you know, really went well uh, for me and my family at the Meadowlands and at Goshen. And uh, they had the, the cardboard cutouts, the whole nine yards there at the Meadowlands. And talk about what it was like to kind of relate back with the fans. Uh, they've been good to you, and, and you've been very good to the sport. Well, the fans at the Meadowlands, yeah, they were great to me. Uh, we just had well, there was more autographs than I could get to, unfortunately, but uh, – uh, they had a really good crowd, as, as big a crowd on, as, on the apron as we've had this year for sure. And they were very enthusiastic, very encouraging. And it uh, really went out of there that night with a, a very good feeling just about uh, how I left. And uh, as I told the fans, I'm, they're going to see me more than they did before because I'm actually going to be at the races on the front side more now than I was when I was driving. And uh, being able to, to work with your brother, Jim, uh, talk a little bit about what that relationship has been like over the years. Well, it's always great to, to drive for Jim. Uh, you know, we were very fortunate in 95. We won the, the Hamiltonian together with Jim training and me driving. And it was just a great day for my mom and dad, and my family, and Jim's. It was uh, just so special. It's one of those things you you can't even dream that up when, when you're kids. So to actually live it is something that we'll never ever forget the pride that you have uh in the sport itself and it goes back a long way uh, talk about some of those those early days and, and kind of how uh, harness racing came upon you well i grew up on a farm in ontario my my grandfather was a farmer who started uh flowing with harness horses back in the 1920s and my dad was a farmer and he he fooled with horses and when i came along i loved the horses didn't care for farming all that much so i just stuck strictly to the horses and was fortunate enough to make a career out of something that i loved doing and worked my way to the metal ends in 1978 and we've been there ever since and as far as uh, the game itself right now uh, harness racing uh, where do you see it now and, and where do you see it going in the coming years and uh, you'll probably well, it's have not something we, to say we'd like it to be mm-hmm. and certainly being at the metal ends for what we call the glory years when we were drawing 15 16 thousand each and every night uh we're nowhere near that right now i really believe that uh we haven't done enough changing of our game and how we present the races and how we present uh, the gambling option to the people's changing um appetite so that's something that we have to do in the future because i believe really believe we still have something to offer from an entertainment value from a gambling uh standpoint that uh, we just have to get it out there in a better fashion and john uh, a lot of a lot of drivers there at the meadowlands let's talk about some of those relationships as you mentioned uh the heyday uh, you know back in the day uh, some great driving and, and great camaraderie yeah, let's go back to to some of those early days and people used to like you know you're on a horse and and some of those other competitors are on a horse uh, o'donnell or, or moiseev or guys like that well yeah it was always competitive um when i first came to the meadowlands it was guys that i just uh, read about growing up uh, uh, Ben Webster um, Bud Gilmore Hervé Fillion uh, they were there so it was, you know people that I'd looked up to and then 
certainly O'Donnell and, and I had a you know quite a rivalry, and Jack Moiseev as well. Mike Lachance, you know, we went to, uh, and Cat Manzi. I mean, there there was really some uh, high-powered drivers at the Meadowlands uh, over the years, and um, it, it was always special just to win a race at the Meadowlands. It's such a hard place to to race and win. So anytime you even won, even if it was wasn't as high a quality of horses some people would read about it was special just to be able to win a race at the metal end john how about the camaraderie is there you know people behind the scenes as you say you know um, getting educated with harness racing the average person may not know a lot about it but talk about maybe what it's like in the driver's room or in a paddock and when you're you're chatting with some of the drivers or is there kind of a camaraderie kind of like a team atmosphere in, in football or something like that no not at all it, you're going out there, you're trying to beat the other guy. So there's no team aspect. I mean, everybody's civil. Everybody leaves it on the track for the most part. Every once in a while, you'll get an argument after a race. But um, it, you don't get that type of camaraderie. You get respect. And every driver that goes out there, you know, is aware of safety. That's the number one concern. And, and the, especially at the top level, guys are always concerned about safety. But as far as... Um, socializing there's there's not that much socializing between drivers uh it's you're too competitive just to to get that close and being able to you know know the program so you have you know you're racing a race seven you run down you see your horse and you see everybody else's horse um you know there's been talk to say oh john campbell he he kind of knows what everybody's going to do he knows a little bit about every horse when do you find time to kind of study that or, or understand that with the busy schedule you guys would have on a regular basis well, you take time before the races. You'll study the program. Every driver will take a look at that program and take a look, see how his horse fits in the race, take a look at the competition, who's driving it, because the drivers have tendencies as well as the horses. So um, you're factoring that in. We're looking at, at it almost like a, a handicapper. We're trying to bet the race, trying to figure out how the race is going to go. That's exactly what we do. And then we try and incorporate our strategy into it how we think that's going to happen and how the horse I'm driving fits. And if he, if he can do what I want him to, if he can, you know, overcome a tough trip or he has to have a perfect trip, all that is factored in. And it's really just like a handicapper. And then you'll get uh, feedback from the trainer before you go behind the gate just to, he'll tell you how the horse feels, how he, he feels that the best way to race him is. And you use all that, information and try and come up with a plan that uh, will get you back to the winner's circle over time uh, harness racing has, has changed a lot uh, between you know uh, quality and, and and times and different things like that and over the next few years uh where do you see it going uh, you see horses going even faster i think so i think i don't think we've gotten to the bottom of what they can accomplish we just had a, a new world record uh last year I, I think it will be lowered again within the next few years i think what we're seeing is more and more horses capable of being in that 47 to 48 range than what there used to be there used to be one or two come along every once in a while but now there's more of them um but it is it's very difficult to get below that 146 threshold but i really believe we'll see it within the next um oh two to five years and uh, as far as uh, that, that new role with the Hamiltonian Society, that'll keep you pretty busy all year long, huh? Yeah, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of work here. Um, I certainly have a lot of respect for the office here and, and what Tom Charters has done over the years, and uh, there's certainly a lot of work. But uh, it's something I'm looking forward to and, uh, you know, bringing my own style to. And, uh, you know, going forward, uh, I'm just happy to be involved in the game. Well, uh, obviously, it's been a, a tremendous career, John. You've driven some incredible horses over time. You're uh, as humble as always and as fortunate uh, as you always say you are. Uh, it's been a great ride, and uh, we wish you the very best in your new role. Okay, thank you very much. I look uh, forward to speaking to you about different issues in the future. All right, legendary driver John Campbell now heading the Hamiltonian Society here on the John Mandola Show. We are driven by McCarthy Tire Service.